Cliff Slater, Mr. Chairman, members. Um, I, I do want to reiterate, reiterate what I said before about traffic congestion. Uh, it is very clear from the testimony today that many, many people do not understand that traffic congestion with rail will be far worse than it is today. It's ne that statement is never made clearly in the alternatives analysis or anything that comes out of the administration. You have to delve into the tables to find that while today we are 6% over vehicle, uh, over highway capacity with the number of vehicles during the rush hour, that with rail on H1, we will be 31% over. But nobody anywhere is making the clear statement that traffic congestion with rail will be far worse than it is today. And I think the folks on the far end of the Leeward Corridor should, should know that. It should be made very clear to them. And I think that if, it, if they all knew that the support, their support for rail will dwindle. Have you noticed that um, all the time the, the, the economics of this thing get worse? We started off at 2.6 billion and the city's been gradually edging it up and, and now we are 4.6 billion and counting. And we've been waiting on a financial plan and we still don't have a financial plan um, for what the, the city is recommending. We do have a funding options analysis, quote unquote, and a financial feasibility report. And from that, we get to understand that the train will not begin operations until 2020. That to build the full rail alignment, they need to raise, if you take the trend analysis uh, of new taxes, that they'll re need to raise $1.2 billion in 2006 dollars uh, in either new taxes or raiding the general fund. And they're planning on $1.2 billion from the federal government when they were told by the FTA 18 months ago that it's unlikely that they would get that much, that 500 million would be more like it. That 450 was what was forecast by the the draft Oahu Regional Transportation Plan and with the remaining $750 million to come from where other than new taxes raid the general fund. This whole exercise financially is being rushed in a way that makes a mockery of deliberative process. We're not getting our ducks lined up before we're jumping into this before we know really what this is going to cost us. And just, and all that depends on it costing 4.6 billion, which is their, their latest estimate. But I tell you, if you take the 1992, um, the 1992 final uh, environmental impact statement, and you adjust for inflation and you adjust for the mileage, because it's a much longer system, um, and you adjust for, for the length of the, the, the mileage and the inflation, and you put in the same 33% for contingencies and overruns as the city has uh, in the current price, you finish up with 6.4 billion, not 4.6. And coincidentally, if you do the same with Miami, because Miami is the, the only other elevated rail line similar to what Honolulu is planning, and you adjust there for the construction cost index and the 36% differential between Florida and here, and you coincidentally come up with $6.2 billion. I think you need a financial plan that says, hey, suppose it is $6.4 billion, what happens? Um, Thank you. And one, may I say one thing more, ma'am? Sure. And that is that everybody that's coming up to testify is to, either yes for it or no against it. They're not for it if it's $2 billion and against it if it's six. It's Thank not you. a very obvious business decision being made here. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Slater? Yes, Councilmember Upholt. I guess let me ask you that question then. I, obviously the price of rail, and I've said this in a number of places, is the biggest downside of rail right now. If 
cost weren't the issue. If we could somehow make that disappear, I know that's fantasy land, but let's mm -hmm. suppose that. What would your position be on building a rail line here? Do you think it's a solution for our traffic situation, transportation needs for this island? Well, you can't, you, you know, as you said, it's fantasy land to so, say so if cost, that, wasn't, well, that, cost that, wasn't an issue because cost, right I'm now. a businessman, Todd, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's benefits and costs and you weigh one against the other, okay, and I, I conclude, I've concluded for a long time that the, that the, that the benefits in no way are justified by the cost of this thing. Understood, and I think we all understand that. My question is, if the price, say, again, the FTA gave us $4 billion, do you think rail as a solution is, is a solution for our island's transportation needs? When you, when you look at all the other metro areas with rail, and incidentally, the, the, there are more um, in the in the metro areas that are larger than us, there are more without rail lines than with them. Okay, but if you look at the ones that with rail, there are n there's not one of them that has increased the percentage of people commuting by public transportation of any kind because they put a rail line. I mean, it just hasn't happened. And you you you, only, you look at that and you can see that there are benefits from increasing public transportation, but reducing traffic congestion is not one of them. And to me, our major, major problem is the reduction of traffic congestion on our highways, okay? And that is the one thing that we're not doing because the alternatives analysis shows that we have currently, we're 6% over capacity on our highways in the, in the H1 Cam Highway Corridor, we put the rail in and we'll be 31% over capacity. So how, you know, if, 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 the, if your objective is to reduce traffic congestion, then, you know, then the, then the money is being not spent well. You've studied this a lot longer than I have and been involved in this issue a lot longer than I have, and that's why I ask you the question of, again, if we can put away the cost, is rail a helpful piece of our transportation solution for our island? N not, if, uh, not if a major concern is traffic congestion. I, I think you'd be much better off with what is essentially a proper regional uh, bus rapid transit program uh, y using, using the managed lanes, hot lanes. I think that much greater opportunity to, for, for commuters to go door to door without transfers. Transfers kill. When you get down to what motivates people to use public transportation is when they can save time. And they're more concerned, it's like people who want to serve coffee on trains and buses or newspapers, etc. The issue is what gets me to work fastest. And if you, can, if you have a means of knocking 15 minutes, for example, off of a commute, people will switch to public transportation. Agreed, and it, but it's not only just the travel time from when you get on the bus or rail to when you get to your end point, but it's how long do I have to wait for that bus sure. to pick me exactly. up for that rail, and, and exactly. so the, the head times and... The, um, the, t the total trip, door to door. Right, and, and again, I, we've heard the argument, and I, I believe it, that buses are stuck in the same traffic everyone else is. Right, and Unle unless you have managed lanes, in which case um, they, you know, they, they've got 60 miles an hour, while the train goes at 20, 23, 24 miles. Okay, and I, I still have a problem with that 60 mile per hour statement because like I said, I'm in the zipper lane and we're not going 60 miles an hour when we've got a dedicated lane. And um, that's because they're allowing the t HOV twos at the moment and there's too many vehicles in the, in the zipper lane. Okay. That's the problem there. Jump into the other issue that I've raised with the hot lanes and adding that additional lane capacity on the highways is the local road capacity issue yeah. when you get into urban Honolulu. Um, I said, whether it's King Street, Nimitz, Bishop, whatever it might be, the traffic that are on those is pretty full right now. I mean, how do we deal with that issue if we were going with a managed lane alternative? <clears throat> well, first off, I, you know, I, I would agree with you. That's an issue. Um, and uh, Parsons Brinkerhoff, uh, you know, you folks uh, gave them $10 billion, or $10 million, excuse me, I'm so used to the billions these days, $10 million to, to deal with that issue for the alternatives. 
and they've finished up giving you one managed lane alternative and five rail alternatives. Okay? I do think that if they could have spent some time on that, as, as did Tampa. I mean, Tampa's distribution of the traffic com coming off of their hot lanes, managed lanes, is quite extensive, both ingress and egress. And you do, and especially the distribution downtown, that's a, it's a complex traffic engineering problem. And uh, if you were given the, give the task to Dr. Pravadoris, Okay, and he could run his run his models and and, and see what play the what if games as to to ways of distribu distributing the traffic. Um, we'd have that solved. I think in any of these studies, the first step into getting to into the detailed analysis and the engineering analysis is sort of the the layman's look and say, hey, is this even something that we can try to deal with before we devote a whole bunch of time and money into a system or a, looking at a solution that right from the start we say really isn't a solution at all. I mean, it's like this whole thing of, of Tampa put, spends 400 billion, four, 400 million <laughs> building what is a comparable facility, okay? And, and here we have Parsons Brinkerhoff trying to tell us that it's 2.6 billion. That's, that's a spread. As a businessman, I just don't buy that, you know? I, uh, and and, and uh, I, th I think we all had that hesitation when we saw the 2.5 number, but I think it's, it's just as questionable or uneasy for people to say, well, it costs $400 billion there, let's double it and say it's going to cost $800 million to a $1 billion dollars I here. I mean, we didn't there, do there's got to be, like you say, there's got to be some science to that, and I, I think agree. that's part of what the, the task force that the council created is, is, we've asked them to look at, is, hey, how... Well, how, they, how was that analysis, and is it real? Are there, are there flaws in that analysis that got Parsons Brinker off to the 2.5 number? Well, they don't seem to have a problem with the, with the thought that the soft costs, the consultants' costs, architects, etc., is nearly twice as much for this particular managed lanes project as what cost the entire project in Tampa. And they don't seem to have a problem with that. That seems fair and reasonable to them.